Welcome back, MG fam, to the Prairie View Legacy here on College Hoops 2K8, and the time has come. We are here in the national championship game for the second season in a row. Last year, we faced a top team in Providence who we took care of, and now we're going to face another top team in the UNC Tar Heels. They're coming off of their victory against the USC Trojans, where they won that one 86 to 78. And now they're looking to try to get payback against us in our second matchup of this season. The first time we met these guys was in our season opener, where we upset them 98 to 84. That game was a barn burner, one of our best this season. And Nielsen came out late and tied the game up for the Tar Heels, which took it to overtime. But in OT, our boy Big Mac took over and got us the victory. They couldn't stop him in the paint, just like you guys have been seeing throughout this tournament. And we're going to look to see if he can do it again in the championship game. All right, so we know the Tar Heels finished the regular season as the number one team in the nation. They cruised through their conference, finishing with a 15-1 record in the ACC, which is supposed to be the best conference in the nation. This team is led by Bonner, the power forward, who is averaging 16 points a game, and along with Carmichael and Clark, who are both averaging over 13.5 points. So now we're going to jump into this title game, man. What a great way to finish out the season. We're going to try to make it two victories versus the North Carolina Tar Heels. And out here at tip-off, we got it, baby. Let's go. Cameron, Adams, Stapley, Big Mac, and Kane. We're looking for a big night from one of you guys. And starting this thing off is Cameron. If it's your night, Cameron, take over. All right, so Clark is going to pull that one. A bad shot, but Maldonado got that one back. And Maldonado... Ended up getting it back again, but he got that joint sent to the ceiling. And check out Adams kicking that one to Kane. And Kane got us up by four in the championship game. All right, so Maldonado down close. Can't even make that one. Let's go. Keep running. This pace right here will give us an advantage. And we got another best. So we're up six to zero. And we're going to kick that one down to Kamen. And Kamen makes it eight. So the Tar Heels still hasn't scored, and Cameron got that steal off the inbound, and we're up by double digits already. All right, so we got Big Mac losing that one. Clark slinged it up to Nielsen, and Nielsen finally got his team on the board after almost two minutes. All right, so Clark with it here, trying to work something. Kicks that one over to Langford, and Langford misses that one, but Bonner got the rebound. And he puts the basket back in. All right, so Clark out here with it once again. He's going to kick it over to Nielsen from deep. That was a deep two. All right, so we're not slowing it down here. We're going to continue to keep this pace. And let's go, Adams. Kick that one over. And Nielsen stole it from us. And Bonner is pushing it. Kicks it over to Maldonado. And he will jam it at the other end. So we're only up by four here. And the Tar Heels are alive. Let's go. So Townsend hosting. Kicks that one over. Stapley from deep. Let's get it, baby. All right, so Clark with it. Got a nice one there, and Stapley kicks it up to Adams. A beautiful steal from Stapley. And there goes the inbound to Carmichael. Carmichael will pull it out top. Good defense from Adams. I'm surprised he didn't call the foul on my boy, but he will take it the other way and makes the layup. Let's go. So Adams has four points here. Carmichael pushing it. Great defense from Adams. Clark going to kick it back, and Adams... Stole that one, two steals in the first half, and he will miss that. Not my boy, Adams. And they're going to sling it up court. Blue Bolts kicks it back to Bonner. We got our hands on another one, and Adams said, give me another go at it, and he flushes it this time. All right, so we're up by 18 right now. And check out Stapley. Stapley's working his magic. Stapley kick it over to Cameron, and the patience from Stapley allowed us to get that basket and there goes Carmichael kicking it up and no they can't hold on to it and we're going to sling it down to Barrett and Barrett gets on the board all right so Barrett up top calling for a pick Townsend trying to set it nothing there got it to Oganoy over to Clark Clark from deep and he made a three-pointer let's go so Carmichael with it this time he's kicking it Carato with it and Haynes will go right to the rack. Yo, that first step took my boy by surprise. And Lil Mac in the corner off the pick. Oh, he couldn't get that one. Bonner with the board and Carmichael pushing it. We couldn't stop him that time. And Haynes cashes in the three-pointer. All right, so Carato up top with it. Kicks it down. Bonner to Clark. And Clark misses that one. But Bonner 
with the putback, and his team is trying to put together a run here. Right, so Clark kicks that one over to Langford, and Langford misses that one, but Nielsen with the putback. We're struggling on the defensive glass. All right, so Stapley waiting on something here. Oh, we ended up losing that one, and Clark is going the other way, and... A nice kiss off the backboard. Quick fast break points for them. They're and he cuts their lead down to 12. Beautiful pass. And Langford got his team within 10. So the Tar Heels got a run going here. And Bonner pulls a jumper right outside of the paint. And Cammon going to kick it over to Stapley. Stapley, somebody has to get something going. He's kicking that one to Big Mac. Big Mac will flush it. And yes, let's get this crowd back on our side. And Carato. Gonna get this one up to Clark and Clark to Bonner and Bonner by himself. All right, so Nielsen with it right now. Only a few seconds left in the first half. He ended up losing that one and Adams to Big Mac. Big Mac to Stapley. Contact. Give my boy the basket. And at the end of the first half, we're up 52 to 40. Our lead has been trimmed a lot. And we're out here shooting 59%. But we are turning the ball over just as much as the opponent. Look, and Cameron is our leading scorer, surprisingly. He has 17 points, and he leads everyone in this matchup. And Clark going to come out here early, getting it to Maldonado, who just went crazy on that jam. And Cameron going to kick it over to Big Mac. Big Mac, he posting. Yeah, double teaming my boy right now, but Stapley is wide open and he cashes in the three. But we're going to continue to let my boy Cameron eat, and he has 19 points. All right, so Maldonado. Trying something. You're on the big man. He kicks it out top. And no serve. Nice tip that time. And Adams flushed out when he has 10 points. And Langford tried his best this time. And Bonner spins. Caught my boy slipping. And oh my goodness. And he punished him. And there goes Stapley. Kicking that one over to Cameron from three. And he misses that one. And Langford kicks it to Nielsen. And Nielsen drains the three. So they're trying to make a comeback again. They were closer earlier, but somehow they lost control. And it looks like they're trying to gain it back. Posting up something. Can he get it? The double team is there once again. And Stapley's pulling the three. And he will continue to do that. All right, so you got that nice pick set. We're going to get that one to Cammon. And Cammon able to make it. So Nielsen dished that one down bottom. And Cammon with the big block. We're up by 16 here. And check out. My boy, Adams, kicking it down. Cameron with the basket. Let's go. All right, so Adams once again, waiting. See if we can go up by a dub. He's going to pull the midi and drain it, baby. Let's go. All right, so Adams looking for someone. Cameron from the corner. He drains the deep two. All right, so we're up by 17. And Nielsen tried a deep one, but he couldn't get it. And we're going to sling it up court. And Stapley, one man to miss, and he got right to the rack. So we're up 79 to 62 with seven minutes left. And check out Stapley. No one can contain the kid. He is going crazy. Maldonado to Carato. Carato ended up losing that one. And Kane will kick it to Adams. And Adams, jam, let's go, baby. All right, so Adams with it once again, slinging it up court. They can't stop us. We got it to Big Mac. They've been double teaming my boy all second half, but he got that one that time. And Langsford ended up losing that one. Adams with five steals in the title game and a jam. And Adams causing all kinds of problems out here. So Stapley with it once again. Big Mac, he posting, got in the paint finally, and he misses that one. But look at the wingspan. He's able to grab that offensive board, which gives him four offensive rebounds in this game. And he's going to dish it right back to Big Mac again, and let's go, baby. Big Mac has 13 points, and Nielsen, what you going to try? Kicking it back. Look at the defense from Kane. We out here killing the Tar Heels, and... Kane said, I want a piece, and he got him some. So with less than a minute left, we got total control of this game. Clark is going to kick that one to Nielsen. Nielsen to Langford. Langford ended up getting blocked. And we got my boy Stapley out here who will flush that one with the left hand. And we have 15 seconds left before we are crowned the national champions. And Cameron to Big Mac. And Big Mac spins. And he will finish his college career with a jam along with two national titles. And the player of the game is our boy, Cameron. 31 points, five rebounds, six steals, one block. 
The guy went to the line a lot. He made 13 out of 16 free throws, and we are the champs, yo. The first back-to-back -back national champs in HBCU history, baby. We took out one of the blue bloods of college basketball. And yeah. this team had a lot of experience, and that's why we were able to fight against adversity when we found ourselves down by a lot. We continue to fight because we know we had the knowledge and the talent to win this whole thing. All right, so Coach Ubaka ended up winning the Conference Coach of the Year, and we believe he should have been the National Coach of the Year, but they continue to play, my boy, because of our prestige. So we're sliding on to some individual awards in our conference. Once again, we got Rob of the Conference Player of the Year, but we had two first-team all-conference selections in Stapley, and Big Mac. We also had two selections on the second team with Adams, who averaged 6.8 points this year, and Cannon, who gave us 15.3. So this graduating class is the deepest class we had. The best player in this graduating class on paper who came to us as a JUCO player, and he was a four-star player. He was the guy to replace our boy Okafer. He had a chance to play with one of the best small fours our school ever seen in Vincent Morgan. We thought they were gonna go all the way that year. And we also thought Stapley would have at least finished with one Conference Player of the Year award. And next we got Mitch Kane, who was a three-star kid from Senegal. He was one of the best defenders on our squad from day one. He made freshman all-conference his first year and second team all-conference in 18. And next up, we got our boy LaForest Kamen. LaForest Kamen finished his career with two second team all-conference selections. When this guy came to us, we knew he was gonna be special, but we didn't know how he would fit on our squad. Because at that time, we had players like Jose Brady, who was killing it down bottom. The round mound rebound reminds you of Charles Barkley. He was out there balling out of control. And Kamen never really got the official go ahead to start until his senior season. Also, we can't forget about our boy Big Mac, the 7 1 big guy. He was the first seven footer we recruited since Wang Wen. He was the first seven footer we signed since Wang Wen. And we knew we had to groom this kid to become the same dominant guy that Wang Wen was. And last but not least, his buddy Lil Mac. Yo, we thought this guy was gonna be a 20 point average player. But, you know, his role increased, decreased sometimes. Him coming off the bench, he was a little undersized, a little small, 6'2, 181. And you know, we love those big guards, but this guy right here was a sharp shooter for real. And anytime we needed him to step up and make something happen, he did. So, speaking of the great players we had here at Prairie View, here's a quick look at who holds the school's records. Total points goes to my boy, Vincent Morgan. He had over 2,000 points in his career, and it doesn't look like anyone will eclipse this number for a while. And points per game goes to our boy Okafor. He averaged 17.4 points in one season, and, and the most field goals made goes to Wang Wen, who had 775, and the highest field goal percentage goes to him as well. So at this point of Corey Ubaka career, he is 13 years in, 308 wins up, and only 111 losses. He spent his whole career here at Prairie View. He's 40 years of age right now, two national championships. But with all of these big jobs on the board, Coach Ubaka is at a crossroads. I'm going to need you guys in the comments section to give Coach Ubaka some suggestions. Some of the big openings available are the Texas A&M job. And the best job on the board, in my opinion, is that Duke job. They're coming off of a down season and Coach K has called it quits. Yes. And we also have that Michigan job on the board along with Missouri and DePaul and it just goes down from there. But so those three top spots, could potentially be a landing place for Coach Ubaka because, because after winning two national championships, he's still without a National Coach of the Year award. He hasn't coached a top recruiting class. It's a lot that he wants to do. And he also wants to continue to build Prairie View. But you guys let me know in the comments what you think he should do. And with that being said, I appreciate you guys for watching this video like always. Hit that like button, that notification bell, and subscribe to the channel, man. It's your boy, McGruff, and I'm out of here.